Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Elden Ring and we're doing another weapon guide and today's is going to be the top 5 best crossbows and where to find them. So this will be a normal weapon video. We'll be ranking them based on how much damage they can do, if they can be upgraded, all that sort of stuff. So we're going to start off at number 5 with the heavy crossbow which you can see I am wielding right here. And as far as appearances go, uh, it actually looks pretty dang good. Actually, for the most part, they do a pretty good job in this game of making the crossbows look both stylish and actually functional. So the uh, heavy crossbow is one of the more standard ones in the game. As far as attributes required to use this one, 14 strength and 10 for dexterity, nothing else other than that, and it does not appear to scale at all, which is actually something that I like about it, because in real life, the best thing about crossbows wasn't that they were more powerful or more accurate or anything like that, it was just that you didn't need to really have any skill to use them. Uh, they were a bit slower, but considering the uh, relative accuracy of pointing and shooting with one of them, and the not having a huge strength requirement to use them consistently, crossbows, that's what historically they were good for. But yeah, so no attribute scaling on this one. For our attack power, at maxed out, we have a physical of 288, and we have a range of 42, so slightly less than standard bows and great bows, but better than light bows. Uh, this one does not uh, have any sort of a cool special attack other than the kick ability, and it cannot be upgraded using Ashes of War. And so the heavy uh, crossbow is going to be a random loot type weapon, so as I always say with random loot, the best way to try to get it, other than obviously killing the people that I tell you to get to get it is going to be to make sure you have a nice high arcane level and you're using your trinkets that maximize the drop rate for loot type items. But as far as where to get this one, anyone wielding it is obviously going to be a great start. Uh, there are some soldiers right here at the gate front, which is where I'm at, but they're the ones that I recommend killing to try to grind out this one. But also any crossbow wielding mausoleum soldiers around any of the traveling mausoleums all over the map, they all use this crossbow. There's lots of different places where you can grind out high amounts of enemies at a time, but uh, like I said, my favorite favorite, or at least probably my favorite, is right here by the gate front in, in uh, Limgrave because it's early game and there's a couple of them sitting right here. So you're just going to want to take out there's one on this side and then two on that side. Any of them have a chance to drop this crossbow, not this guy here. So basically just keep grinding out these guys, keep spawning back in and killing them until you get the crossbow. And like I said, this concentration, there's a number of them. Actually, there's two on this side. Okay, so there are two on each side. So you can kill four here and then just respawn and keep trying until eventually one of them will drop it. So that is probably the best way to get the heavy crossbow in Elden Ring. So that is number five. Let's move on to number four. All right, and so for our second crossbow on this list, the one that comes in at number four, we have the Arbalest. And now this one's a, another pretty cool looking one. It is a wooden one. And it's actually an interesting example of a historical uh, wooden recurve type crossbow. So uh, I'll just uh, quick shoot it so you can see that normally the limbs kind of bend forward because of the way that it's designed. And since you're not using a steel limb, you can actually do that. And you're using a thick wooden cross member. And then when you uh, load it, it actually kind of pulls it so it looks pretty flat. So it's uh, like I said, this is a real historical example. I'm, I mean, there are real historical examples that look a lot like this. And I think it's a cool detail that they added it into the game. As far as stats on this one, for attributes required, we have 18 for strength and 12 for dexterity. Again, no attribute scaling. Our attack power is 308 for physical and 42 for range, so not quite as good as the last, but still pretty dang good. At least for range, the uh, attack power is actually greater. Um, this one cannot be upgraded using Ashes of War, and again, we just have the kick special attack, so nothing very special there. As far as how to get this weapon goes, you're going to want to, it's going to be over here in Limgrave, so it's another one that you can get nice and early in the game. And once you've made your way up to the Stormvale main gate. You're going to want to head through here, and I'll just kind of zip through this little area. Normally, there's lots of guards. I've taken them out before recording this little section, just so I didn't have to do a bunch of fighting. Once you've made your way up here past all those guards, you're going to want to go up this little uh, rocky slope here. So it's just a bunch of jumping. There will be some enemies up here that you'll have to take care of. One on this side, one on that side. And there will also be a guy controlling a large, powerful crossbow over there. You're going to want to jump across here. Then jump over into this little section and past this guy. Presumably you've already killed him. You'll find this corpse here. And on this corpse, you'll find the Arbalest. So it's a very easy uh, weapon to miss. There's uh, you know a great chance that you'll make your way through the entire game never having gone up there. And it's the only place in the game that you can find the Arbalest. So that is where you find it, and that's number four. Let's move on to number three. All right, and so our next item on this list is the Pulley Crossbow, one of the most unique ones uh, out of all the crossbows in the game, and uh, one that I personally really, really like. Now, as far as appearances go, it's got a pretty strange, complex design. Basically, you can see two limbs that, based on just a cursory glance, I would say are designed so that when one fires, it kind of cocks the other one. So we're, we're 
dangerously close to the realm of ridiculous fantasy here, at least for a medieval technician, but it does look very, very cool. As far as attributes required to use this one, strength of 16 and dexterity of 16, no attribute scaling. For our attack power, we have a physical of 146, uh, which seems very low, but it does have a pretty sweet fire rate, and we have a range of 42. Again, it cannot be upgraded using Ashes of Orb, and you do have the kick special ability with it. And I guess I'll, uh, I'll display that just in case anyone's wondering. That's what a kick looks like. It's not overly useful, but every once in a while you can sneak up behind someone on a ledge or whatever and kick them off, and that's always pretty fun. So the fun thing about this one is just going to be the way that it fires. It fires three bolts uh, with one press of the trigger, so... So it's it's it has a slight spread when you're when you're shooting it at someone. I guess I could shoot it at one of these goats over here, just as a display. So you get a cool rapid fire attack. So like I said, even though it has a lower damage uh, than the other crossbows that I've already shown on this list, you do have a burst weapon now. They have a little bit of a spread, so it is possible to miss with this weapon. But I personally quite like it. See, we got him eventually. So, it definitely gives you a fun gameplay style. Now, with all the crossbows, this will hold true. I like using them as an offhand weapon. I'm using them main hand here just for demonstration purposes. But the crossbow makes one of the best ranged weapons to keep offhand, so it gives you that ability to have some mid-range attack ability. Typically, I'll be rocking a straight sword or something like that in my main hand, and then a crossbow in the offhand. Uh, as far as how to get this weapon goes, it's a unique weapon, and so you're going to want to make your way up here in the Altus Plateau region to the Mount Galmir subregion and make your all the way all the way over here to the craftsman shack once you've made your way here it's uh pretty simple to get this weapon it's just going to be up on this body sitting here uh leaning over this little ledge here and uh that's all you have to do to get it pretty straightforward you don't have to do any ridiculous boss fights uh to drop it and you don't have to trade anything for it and you don't have to solve any puzzles or anything you just pick it up off the guy who it clearly was uh not good enough to protect so that is how and where you get the pulley crossbow the one that comes in at number three let's move on to the number two best crossbow in the game all right, and so for our runner-up at number two, we have the Crepus's Black Key Crossbow. So this one's got a very unique look. It's quite long. It looks like it was uh, made out of, like, a staff or something to start with. It's not totally ahistorical to have crossbows with a really, really long stock like this, but uh, it's pretty rare. Uh, other than that, it just looks pretty standard as far as crossbow designs go. As for our attributes required to use it, 14 for strength and 16 for dexterity, no attribute scaling, and our attack power is 238, and we have a range of 47, so it does have a slightly better range than quite a few crossbows. Again, you cannot upgrade it with Ashes of War, and it just has the kick special attack. As far as where to get this one goes, it's a pretty straightforward process. Uh, you get it from the Table of Lost Grace uh, here at Round Table Hold, so to get here, you need to have progressed far enough into the game that either A, you've rested at a Site of Grace in uh, Kaelid over here, or B, you've made it through Stormvale Castle and rested here over at the Lake Facing Cliffs. In either of those cases, you'll be contacted by your Maiden, who will then offer to bring you to the Round Table Hold. You accept that, and once you're here, you can go get this immediately. Uh, just Run over to the right here past this fireplace and run past the smith over here and go down these stairs and then make a hard left and then you'll be able to open up with a stone sword key. You'll be able to open this up. And once you're inside here, there'll be a chest that you can open up. And inside the chest, you'll find the Crepus's Black Key crossbow and some Black Key bolts. And so that is how and where you get this crossbow. So like I said, pretty straightforward process. You need a stone sword key and you need to have made it to round table hold. But once you get here, that's how you get it. And then you can upgrade it using somber smithing stones all the way to plus 10. So pretty great weapon. I really enjoy it. It's definitely a lot of fun as far as crossbows go, uh, but that's number two. Let's move on to the number one best crossbow in the game. All right, and so finally at number one, we have not only the best, but also the most unique crossbow in the game, the Full Moon Crossbow. So you can see here, it's a, uh, it's, it's a crossbow, but it's got a big old metal dish looking thing in it and a bowstring or crossbow string that appears to be magical energy. So it's got a very unique style to it. As far as attributes required to use this one, strength of 10, intelligence of 14, and dexterity of 10. So this is the only one that has something other than a strength or dexterity requirement. Our, our attack power, we get a physical of 175 and a magic of 175 and a range of 42. No Ashes of War upgrades on this one, and again, just the kick special attack. And this one does have a unique interaction when using magic bolts. So I like to use the meteor bolts with this one. That is, uh, it's a pretty cool weapon, and I love the reload animation. As far as how and where to get this, it is a process. Uh, not a long process, just an annoying one. So you have to have made your way over to Lyurnia and into the Rhea Lucaria Academy. Academy, and then you can come to the debate parlor site of grace or, or I should say once you've gotten here or you can just fast travel to here that's the closest one then I'm just gonna show you the path to get this one and it can be a little bit annoying but just follow my steps exactly
All right, once you've made your way all the way around there and up that really long ladder, it'll be in this chest right here. And so that is how you get the full moon crossbow. And so that's another one like the arbalest that I could certainly understand you making it an entire playthrough without, without ever finding it, because it is really off the beaten path. But if you want to see on the map where, we're, where we are, we're at the top of this bell tower. So an annoying process to be sure, but pretty worth it considering how good this crossbow is. And so like I said, my favorite way to use crossbows is as an offhand weapon, as they give you just a little bit more reach, don't need two hands to be operated, so you can very effectively utilize them alongside whatever your favorite sword is, whether that's a katana or a thrusting sword like I've got equipped here, or a battle axe or whatever it may be. So crossbows are definitely an underrated weapon in the game. They're great because they don't require uh, very high skills to use, given how well, uh, how good their damage output is. And like I said, they just pair really well with uh, melee build. So I definitely like crossbows a lot. So that is the top five and where to find them. Like I said, probably it's hard for me to pick a favorite out of them because I actually like a lot of the crossbows for a lot of different reasons reasons, but that's how you find them. So I hope you enjoyed the video, but we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.